welcome you all to our Bible study today as uh, we get into the R version, if you will, of Scripture, the uh, story of Samson and Delilah. And uh, if you want to open your Bibles to Judges chapter 16, uh, that's where we're going to begin. Let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, as we hear a story that we go, man, I didn't realize all this was in Scripture, remind us again of how you use where we're at. You take us where we're at, and you move us into what you want us to be. Bless our understanding, bless our time, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Judges chapter 16, the story of Samson and Delilah. Um, before we even get into it, I, I need to give the uh, rendition to help us understand there's a just a, a, a snippet that's in there of the Nazarite vow. Um, the firstborn male Nazarite. A vow was made like baptism. It's not because they made it, it's because of, that's who they are. Samson was a Nazarite. He was the firstborn son. Therefore, there was a vow that worked with him. Same as John the Baptist, same with Jesus. Three things were a very, very important part of this. Number one, they were not to drink strong drink. You're going to see that happen over and over again here. Number two, they were to touch no dead animal. Now, how do you eat meat when you don't touch a dead animal? Uh, don't get into that so far as you miss the point. There's a time with Samson that after he had killed a lion, he opened its mouth and he came back later and bees had made a nest in, in the carcass. And it says he scraped the honey out. Uh, scraped. He, he didn't just touch a dead animal. He used his own natural need, quote unquote, and used that instead of doing what God had called him to do. Cutting of his hair, we're going to get to that later on. But this was really, quite literally, strike three with Samson. This was not strike one. And uh, it shows how far he had fallen away from the Lord. Not just a matter of taking a short step, but he had totally stepped away from God. Again, this is chapter 16 of Judges. And uh, can't let this go either. Samson is one of the judges of Israel, meaning he's one of the leaders of Israel. He's not just a... Uh, member of the church somewhere he is one of the leaders he is the leader he's the judge requirements go a whole lot higher this is verse 1 of 16. one day samson went to gaza where he saw a prostitute okay he went in to spend the night with her thank you niv the people of Gaza were told, Samson's here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn, we'll kill him. Samson lay there until the middle of the night. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the city gate, and together with the two posts, tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. This is no small feat that he did, but it goes to show us the power that is available to each and every one of us, not just to tear down gates, but the symbolism that's there, that the, the walls that hold us in, the, the things that hold us back, God gives us the strength to release them. But he did it not just for Samson. He did it to show the power that he has for all of us through faith in what he's done through his son. Sometime later, sometime later, what a, what a phrase. He fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sordek, whose name was Delilah. Um, ESV puts it different. After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sordek, whose name was Delilah. Uh, he fell in love. Uh, thank you, NIV. It makes it sound like his 
No, he has a infatuation with Delilah. Not only is she beautiful, but what she stands for, but please bear in mind what she stands for is not the grace of God and the love of God through his son Jesus Christ, but all the worldly things that Delilah represented. That's what he fell in love with. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can, this is NIV, lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so that we can tie him up and subdue him. Um, ESV uses the word so that we can seduce him, lure him, seduce him. Um, I think there's a better word than any of these. It's the word delude or maybe dilute. If we can water down the power of God, if we can water down what God's done for us, if we can water down the real message of what our, our faith does for us, that's a big teller of what's happening in the story of Samson. Can we water down his faith? Can we redirect it in, in such a way that other things are more important? Sometime later, yeah. And we'll each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and how you might be bound that one could, again, the word subdue. Um, what does it take for you and I that we reach a point where we're willing to give in rather than stand strong in our faith? Verse 6, verse 7, verse 6 in the NIV. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me, Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Subdued, uh, redirected, um, yeah, you get the image of this. And Delilah believed this. You use seven weak strips of linen, uh, fresh bowstrings that have not been dried. Yeah, like this is some uh, incantation. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Now, there's an imagery within this one that, that I, I found really kind of strange. He snapped the bowstring as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. These weren't dried. This is not like it's a a piece of uh, whatever you want to call it, something that's just really easily ignited. This is something that's not been dried, and yet he snaps it like something that's come so, so close to a flame. The imagery is one of, uh, it, it is supernatural, it's, it's totally unusual, it, it's not something that was normal. But he did it by the grace and the power of God. Strike one with Delilah. Verse 10. Oh, th th this is one that when you read this in English, you just kind of go. Then Delilah said to Samson, You've made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. ESV. Then Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Mocked. You've made a fool of me. Um, Delilah's worth before all these Philistines is really going down the tubes pretty quick. Mocked, you made a fool of me. Get the imagery going with your head as the way Delilah is now talking to Samson. He said, verse 11, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes, 
that have never been used will become as weak as any other man. Well, what's the difference between uh, bow strings and rope? Not a whole lot in this story as it goes. So Delilah took new ropes. Notice before, the drawstrings were brought by the Philistines. Now it simply says Delilah took the new ropes. She tied him with them, which, let your mind go, Samson is totally awake during this time, and he knows what's going on. He's playing a game with her. She called him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads, drawstrings, threads. 13, Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you've been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. Restrained, tied, where has your strength come from? I'm just taken so clearly to the scriptures that say, my strength comes from the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. Uh, where's Samson at with this? He's, he's playing this, this game called life that's so easy for you and I to fall into as well. Samson replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into a fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with a pin. Now, there's an underlying theme that's going on with all of this stuff. Samson wasn't just falling asleep. This is Samson getting drunk, intoxicated. And during this time, and you're going to see it further down the road here, um, this is one of the strikes with the Nazarite vow, touching no strong drink. She calls to him again. This, this time he's got the, his hair's braided. And, oh, the wonderful image. She called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep. He pulled up the pen and the loom with the fabric. And Delilah said to him, how can you say I love you when you won't? Verse 15, confide in me. I'm going to go over in mine with the ESV. You have mocked me these three times. You won't confide in me. You've mocked me. This is the third time you've made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. And then 16, with such nagging, she prodded him after day until he was sick to death of it. Um, I got to read ESV. This. And when she pressed him hard with her words day after day and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. Nagging, urging, prodding, encouraging, it, it reached a point with Samson that he was done. So verse 17, so he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. There's where it comes in. He's a Nazarite from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. I've, I've got to pull this back together because we just, with confirmation class last night, we went through the power of baptism. The power of baptism. I was a Nazarite from my mother's womb. This is not a choice Samson made that says, well, I've decided I'm now going to follow Jesus. No, this was a decision made for him before he was ever born. From the moment he was conceived, this was going to be who he is. Our baptism, when we, we turn baptism into something that it's, it, it's never intended to be, it's not what we do, it's what God has done. Where does my strength come from? 
comes from the Lord, not from something I have done. Samson, the powerful message of this whole story, he's playing games with life. Let's not play games. Let's know where our real power comes from. He finally told her, my power comes from my hair. (sighs) No, it didn't. Delilah saw that he had told her everything. She went word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more. He's told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hand. They're going to pay her off. After putting him to sleep on her lap, uh, can we read between the lines? After putting him to sleep on her lap, got him drunk one more time. Here we go. She called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. So began to subdue him. I'm going to go over here again. This is verse 19. She began to torment him. Thank you, ESV. Torment him. No. It's it's, it's that whole image. She began to ply him. She began to seduce him in such a way that instead of his strength coming from the Lord, he put his strength back in himself. And that's when it left him. His hair has been cut. She called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and he thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. He did not know that the Lord had left him. As I read this history of the past, as I read this event that God put into his word, there are so many subtle things that are just flying in here. We think we've got the world by the tail. We think we know what's going on. We think we've got everything taken care of. Samson, one of the judges, he did not realize the Lord had left him. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's reality. How far do we walk away from God before God says, I'm done? We have stories like the prodigal son. We have have these images that over and over again, God reminds us, don't push me. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you not just rest, but strength and power to face life. But if we keep pushing him away, if we keep playing games, you hear the message of what this is doing. Then the Philistines seized him. They gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding grain in the prison. There are none so blind as he who will not see. It became reality for Samson. They gouged out his eyes. He became blind. And there's a word in here that, that, that takes it even further. They bound him with bronze shackles. Bronze is not a big thing there. He ground at the mill in the prison. The word literally, he became a concubine. He became a prostitute. Can I take you back to the beginning of chapter 16? One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He became blind, and it was fulfilled. Now, there's more to the story than we're going into now, but let it settle there for now. God used Samson, even with all of his games that he played. And God brought about a fulfillment of all that God can do. In the same sense, he can use you, he can use me, even through our frailties, even through our sin. 
but that's the power of God. It, it's time for all of us to give him our best, not our worst. This is a time of year right now we're experiencing some of the coldest weather we've had in decades. Let the warmth of Christ fill you, not the warmth of the world, and let his power and his peace fill you. Let's close with a prayer. Awesome God, as we, we hear this familiar story of Samson and Delilah, it's easy to just gloss over and just see it not as a reality for us, but just as a story of something that happened a long time ago. Help us see, Lord, how easy it is for each and every one of us to become deluded and to walk away or to push away. Instead, open us that you may truly guide. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. God's peace.